Number 10. Balloon Priest A Brazilian priest must have been inspired by the Disney movie Up because he thought he could fly using balloons. To be fair, Father de Adelier Antonio de Carli did succeed after filling over 1,000 balloons up with helium. His goal was to raise money for congregation members at his chapel. So, on April 20, 2008, he put on some weatherproof overalls and a flight suit before heading to the skies. Other than raising money, Father Carli also wanted to break a record set at 19 hours for being ballooned up in the air. He had some experience in the clouds thanks to his extensive skydiving record. The priest also went through thorough survival training prior to the balloon launch. Just a few months earlier in January, he'd even done a test run of his journey with 600 balloons, 17,390 feet in the air. This trip was successful and made Father Carli even more ambitious. Before lifting off, he notified Brazilian air traffic control what he'd be doing. Sadly, about eight hours or so in, the priest was suddenly unreachable. Immediately, search parties were sent out in helicopters and aeroplanes. But with radio silence, no one could find him. Two days into the frantic rescue operation, a large bundle of colorful balloons were spotted. They were near Father Carli's last point of contact, but his body was not there. A few months later in July, an unrecognizable corpse was located in southeastern Brazil by horrified employees on a tugboat. Through DNA analysis, police officers confirmed that it was the priest. It's believed that strong winds blew him off his flight course as he was headed to Dourados. Number 9. Joseph Menier 46-year-old Joseph Menier made a living as a tree trimmer. One day in November 2022, while Joseph was trimming some branches outside in Owensboro, Kentucky, he got tangled up in some nearby Christmas lights and fell into his wood chipper. He struggled to get out, likely causing him to lose balance and fall deeper into the machine. When authorities were sent to the scene of the accident, it looked like something out of a horror movie. They described it in few words, with the most notable being traumatic. Somehow, Joseph was still alive when paramedics got there, but with multiple severe injuries, he didn't last long. He wasn't even transported to a hospital before being declared dead. The wood chipper was actually located near a popular family display called the Owensboro Christmas Lights. Hundreds of people visit the spot every year to share in the holiday festivities. After the incident, the Owensboro family and the site's organizers publicly told everyone interested in coming to see the lights to be extremely cautious and come on a different night. Joseph's loved ones remember him as a hard-working family man. The story just goes to show that you never know what day might be your last. We're sure Joey never even considered the possibility of dying in a wood chipper. Who would? Number 8. Ryuchi When you get married, it's not always roses and sunshine. Relationships can take a lot of hard work to be healthy and successful, which means fights can happen. While arguments should never get to a physical level, anger is sometimes expressed in funny ways. For example, in Tokyo in 2021, a 70-year-old Japanese woman named Michiko Ota was frustrated with her 69-year-old husband Ryuchi. In a blind temper tantrum, she threw a full bottle of water at him before leaving their home for a few hours. When she got back, she realized that Ryuchi was unresponsive, so she quickly called for help. The man was taken to get medical treatment, but due to a fractured rib and some other injuries, he didn't make it. After her husband's death, police officers grew suspicious that Michiko was responsible. She told the authorities that she was angry with Ryuchi after having to constantly take care of him. The man apparently had a back injury not too long ago, so Michiko had to do basically everything for him. The day of his death, he was scheduled for an appointment at his rehabilitation center, but refused to go due to pain. His lack of care sent the elderly woman into a rage. It's believed that she not only threw a large one-liter-sized bottle of water at him, but repeatedly beat Ryuchi in the head with it. The man's skull was cracked after the brutal assault. It's unclear if Michiko was arrested for her actions. Number 7. Linda Goldblum during what was supposed to be a fun day at the Dodger Stadium to celebrate 79-year-old Linda Goldblum's birthday and wedding anniversary, the woman lost her life. 
On August 25th, 2018, she and her husband were enjoying the game when all of a sudden, Fran Mulreyes hit a foul ball. Usually, fans get excited when this happens because they might have a chance to catch the baseball. But Linda was not prepared. The speeding ball hit the elderly woman right in her head. As soon as it happened, stadium ushers raced down to the couple's seats to see if she was doing okay. In a daze, Linda responded no. An EMT quickly came over and determined that she needed to be taken to the hospital. While there, she received brain surgery, which left her unresponsive and hooked up to a ventilator for days. Linda was unable to pull through and died. Thankfully, the accident was never put on TV and Dodger Stadium privately reached out to her family to resolve the situation as best they could. It turns out the Gold Blooms often went to watch the Dodgers games and support their favorite team. The day of the incident marked 59 years of a loving marriage. After 2017, protective netting has commonly been used in baseball stadiums after rises in fan injuries. Now across the United States, every major league stadium has implemented the safety precaution. Have you ever been to a baseball game or caught a foul ball? Let us know in the comments down below and be sure to subscribe to the channel to join the Bad Badger family. Number 6. Nur Athini Roslan In 2018, tragedy struck at the Taunku Abd Rahman School in Malaysia. A 14-year-old was killed while out in a field playing with some of her friends. Nur Athini Roslan was struck in the head by a flying lawnmower blade. Around 10.30 in the morning, a tractor near the school grounds was pulling the mower when something malfunctioned. The blade was thrust into the air at high velocity. It was moving so fast that when it hit Afeni, her head was cut in half. Two of her friends were also injured in the freak accident, but they luckily survived the ordeal. One of them did have to get stitches put in her head though. Authorities were called, but were unable to do anything for the young girl. In photos taken from that day, Afeni's father can be seen crying over her lifeless body. There is little information about this case. The last known update was that investigators charged the unnamed 26-year-old tractor operator with manslaughter. It's believed that Afini and her friends were getting ready for an upcoming sporting event. Number 5. Nigel Willis Some people in this world are very comfortable with their sexuality, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. We should, however, warn our viewers that this next story might not sit well with them. On December 30th, 2013, an Englishman named Nigel Willis went to hospital. Apparently, he had a certain object stuck inside his butt, a vibrator. The 50-year-old lived with his mom in London and spent five entire days trying to get the toy out before giving in and going to professionals. Once he arrived at the hospital, doctors realized that he was experiencing septic shock. The foreign object had gotten lodged so far up Nigel's rectal cavity that his bowel had become perforated. He had to be transported via an ambulance since he was extremely dizzy and had spent the last five days on a couch. Medical staff performed an emergency surgery on Nigel, but it was unsuccessful. He lost his life officially on February 7, 2014 due to multi-organ failure related to the vibrator. At the time of his death, Nigel was unemployed and not in a relationship. It's believed that he inserted the device himself. Number 4. Linda Rivera Everyone knows that you probably shouldn't eat raw eggs, but for some reason, most of us do when it's in cookie dough. It's just so hard to resist the delicious temptation. This next story might make you think twice though, the next time you try lick the spoon. In July 2013, a Las Vegas woman named Linda Rivera lost her life thanks to harmful E. coli bacteria. At 61 years old, she ate some cookie dough that she was unaware had been recalled. It was discovered that the bacteria was spotted in small traces inside the Nestle Tollhouse dough from 2009. The company quickly sent out a recall notice after the discovery, even going as far as shutting down production facilities to be cleaned before reopening. Sadly, it seems Linda never got the message. Only one week after eating the cookie dough, her kidneys stopped working. This sent her entire body into a state of septic shock. Linda clinged to life for the next few years in pain, but ultimately lost the battle. 
Her son, Richard Simpson, has expressed his sadness surrounding his mother's death. He has since pledged to make lasting changes to the Food Safety Modernization Act with the FDA. Through this legislation, he hopes to stop the spread of E. coli more effectively. In the years since, Nestle has started using a heat-treated flour to combat the bacteria. They've also emphasized that their dough should only be eaten after being baked thoroughly. Number 3. Bulletproof Charles Darwin is often cited with coming up with the idea of natural selection, which can basically be summed up by survival of the fittest. That being said, not everyone is smart enough to survive. During a house party in 2018, an unnamed man was killed after putting on a bulletproof vest and asking his friend to shoot him. Now, if you didn't know, bulletproof vests are used to lessen the impact of bullets when they hit. They don't necessarily stop any and all injuries, and if a gun is fired at close enough range, the vests could fail to prevent death as well. This might be exactly what happened in this case, when 39-year-old Jason Griffin pulled the trigger on a firearm while pointing it at his friend's chest. Apparently, he didn't know the weapon was loaded and fired as a joke. After trying to save the victim, Jason left the party in a panic. He did go to the police station later on that night to turn himself in. According to Jason's girlfriend Mary, he felt terrible for what happened. The guilt ate away at his conscience, even making him a bit suicidal. In the time after the accident, Jason suffered from two seizures and had to receive medical treatment. In the time since, the man has been charged with manslaughter, as well as unlawful possession of body armor and possession of a firearm while being a felon. Sergeant Mark Holbrook, who helped with the case, said that it's unusual, but these things happen sometimes while talking about the shooting. Number 2. Pasta A lot of college students struggle to put food on the table. They're often busy trying to balance school, work and friends, leaving little time for anything else. Because of this, many young adults survive off of cheap and easy meals, like ramen and pasta, to get them through the day. One such student was a 20-year-old man from Belgium. While he was unnamed, his story was discussed thoroughly in a case study published by the Journal of Clinical Microbiology. The student usually prepared his food at the beginning of the week and stored meals inside Tupperware. Apparently, after boiling pasta, the man left the cooked noodles inside the containers on his kitchen counter. He would reheat the food in his microwave and put sauce on it whenever he got hungry. Five days after making spaghetti noodles and leaving them at room temperature, the man decided to grab some, add tomato sauce, and heat it up. Then, after the meal, he went outside and exercised. Almost instantly, within just 30 minutes after eating, the student had severe pain coming from his abdomen. This forced him to go back home, where he vomited like crazy and experienced diarrhea. But as a young man with little monetary means, he didn't want to go to the doctor. He thought the symptoms would pass after a good night's sleep, so he tried powering through. The next morning, when his worried mom and dad checked on him, he was dead. An autopsy later revealed that the man's liver had shut down due to a bacteria called Bacillus cereus, which is common in food poisoning. Number 1. Alexa Bartel a 20-year-old woman named Alexa Bartel was driving in Colorado one night around 10.45 p.m. when a large rock smashed through her windshield, striking her. At the time of the incident, Alexa was speaking with a friend on the phone. The person on the other line heard strange noises before silence. They were very worried, so the friend tracked Alexa's phone to the scene of the accident. The friend was horrified to find that the young woman was severely injured after her car swerved off the road into a nearby field. Despite the efforts of first responders, Alexa was unable to be saved. Her family and friends were heartbroken by the news and laid out memorial flowers for the victim in the field she died in. In the days since the incident, three high school boys have been taken into custody by police. Nicholas Karolchik, Zachary Quack, and Joseph Kuernan are believed to have been responsible for several attacks involving throwing rocks at vehicles. The boys were driving a Chevy Silverado while tossing the stones at other cars. They've been charged with first-degree murder and are currently awaiting trial. Thanks for watching.
What's the longest amount of time you've left food in the fridge and still eaten it? Let us know in the comments down below. Be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel to see more. We'll see you next time on Bad Badger.